All right. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome to UCC Conversations. And I am your teacher uh, for this evening, Jonathan Coleman of the Media Blast PR. And with us, we also have Morgan Taylor of Career Navigators. And the, <laughs> how are you doing? And, uh, and the, basically the theme of this class is to teach people how to, well, teach people the importance of bio writing. Also, I'm throwing EPKs in there as well, electronic press kits. And uh, we're going to talk about why that's important for business owners, public figures, authors, anybody with a brand to promote, you know, why you need one and how to do one. And if you need help doing one, that's what we're here for. You can also use our services to, uh, and we'll, we'll write that out for you. All right. So um, I have several talking points that we're going to go over. And I also want to say, if you have any questions, definitely put it in the chat. Uh, I also think you can put one in the, uh, I don't know if she's taking them on the comments in the Facebook group, but you could do that as well. I guess you could do that as well. Uh, any, any comments that you have, just get it to, I mean, any questions that you have, get it to us, you know, so we can answer your questions and, uh, and assist you because that's what this is all about, bringing people together and helping them with their businesses. Okay. Let's, uh, let me tell you a little bit about me and why I'm qualified <laughs> to teach this class. <laughs> uh, I'm a PR specialist and, uh, with what I do, I do a lot of writing and, um, although bio writing itself isn't the bulk of what I do. I do offer that service as well. Um, I write press releases. I write articles that go in different uh, media platforms and things like that. Uh, and also when I'm not writing the articles, I need to pitch you guys. I need to pitch your business to those media platforms. And you know what they need? They need a bio. And they also need a, an EPK or, or an EPK if you don't have a, an official bio or something. If you don't have a bio or an EPK, they need something on you so they so so they can see why it's worth their while to have you featured in their media platform, in their magazine. Who are you? What are you all about? Why is it? Why should we care? That's what it's for. Um, and before I get to the meat of this, the, the beginning part of this session, uh, Morgan Taylor, I'd like you to thoroughly introduce yourself and what you do, and then we'll get back into the, you know, the, the flow of things. Thank you. Thank you. Great introduction, Jonathan. Yeah, so um, I work more so on the career side of bio writing. So when it comes to building your career profile, so um, where if the media side of things is ideal to have a professional profile, I work more on the career side. So I specialize more so in building resumes, career profiles, and a professional biography definitely goes a well along those lines. So whether you're um, building your LinkedIn profile, um, running your website for your business, um, a, a professional bio um, is designed specifically for those for those reasons. So I can certainly um, echo the need for that. Jonathan. Definitely. Now, now Morgan, I, I heard you, but I think something's wrong with your, I think the mic might be a little muffled. Oh, no! Yeah, you sound <laughs> clear when you said, oh, no, though. Okay, <laughs> maybe I just speak a little louder, a little closer to my to my computer. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I can dial in on my phone. I'm dialed in through the audio on my laptop, so hopefully there's no issues. Okay, okay. Yeah, you want to the phone? Yes, yeah. you're breaking up. You're breaking up a little bit more. Okay, so it's hard for us to understand you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will um, change my audio. You guys can go ahead and continue. I'll change my audio settings. And um, thank you. For okay, I'll be looking for you. Okay, definitely. All right. Now I've already talked about the importance of uh, why you need one, and uh, you know we, you know, like I like I told you why you need one. Uh, one of the next talking points that I want to go over is, uh, well, first of all, what, what I want to say is, let me forget the talking point. Let me just flow with it. Uh, you guys got to make these things shorter. <laughs> a lot of bios that, I, that I've, I've gotten from uh, some of my clients and they want me to revise it, make it better. Uh, it needs to be shorter. It doesn't need to be five pages. Uh, two pages is okay, but uh, ideally you want to have everything on one page so you can create a one sheet for your bio. 
because when when people are when you see because you want to have a nice little attachment you know I'll show you my hands and i'll talk so you can know i'm passionate about it uh you want to put the when you put the attachment your bio in the emails it needs to just be one page even if it's one pdf file uh because the reason why is in all honesty nobody's going to read all that <laughs> i mean just just in all honesty they want to know the who what when where's and why's about you uh about the business whatever you have going on they don't they, you know a nice synopsis um for public figures for performers things like that yeah you want to have it a little more than just a quick para paragraph but you know they they want it they want it short for the people that you'll be sending it to and uh I also want to say uh, what's important to go in the bio is not, not your favorite color or your favorite foods and all that. I mean, that's cute, I guess, but nobody cares about that either. When you're sending, because the, the majority of people that will receive your bio or who you'll be sending it to uh, are, are people that will book you for speaking engagements, uh, event organizers, promoters. You know, things like that. They'll, those are the ones that's going to read your bio. And the main thing they want to know is, aside from who you are and what your brand stands for, is if I book you, will I make my money back? That's what they want to know. And you should you should add a lot of that in the in the bio, in your EPK. Um, yeah, you should also tell a story with it as well, because, you're, you know, if you have a compelling story to tell, that helps. But you also want to put in your accomplishments. You also want to put in other things you've done. Uh, like just say, for instance, you're, you're a speaker and you've done a TED Talk, but the event organizer doesn't know that yet. Put that you've done a TED Talk and you've gotten thousands of people to, to, you know, to check you out. You need to put those things in the bio. Uh, when, it comes to bio when it comes to your bio, I know a lot of people don't like to, to brag and things like that. It's not about bragging. You have to shine that light. You have to let them know why you're that person that they need to get in touch with you know so um you know i mean yeah hey you got you have to you have to be honest you know you can't be oh i don't want to say that no 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 put that in there you know those things are very important your accomplishments and uh and just stressing you know why it's important for them to use you you know also for artists like recording artists and things like that they want to they want to they want to know that if they book you, there's going to be a crowd that's going to come to see, you, you know, and a lot of promoters are not privy to these independent artists and, th and these independent bands and things like that. Uh, I know you're hot on Spotify. I know your friends and family click the like button on your stuff. But if they book you to perform at their venue, they want to know a bunch of strangers will pay to see you perform, too. So um, and now we're going to dip over into the EPK part of it because that's more of a visual you know, part of the bio, an electronic press kit. What you want to put in there is your proof of you being able to uh, sell tickets. Um, again, put your accomplishments in there. You might want to put photos of past events. If, if, it, if your bio or your EPK is going to be more than one page, the second page should have things like that, like you're building a portfolio. Have photos of the of the crowd, uh, screenshot numbers tickets whatever you want to do i mean don't this is not the time to be modest and and oh i don't want it no you have to let them know hey you, you have to book me for this you know all right do we have any questions for this part of it because i don't want to ramble on i want to get some feedback and talk back and forth with you all as of right now, we don't have any questions, but Morgan, I think this would be a good time for you to come in and talk on the, the career side of it about um, what's important um, components to be in a professional or a career oriented um, bio. Yeah, can you guys hear me better now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, yeah, piggybacking off of what Jonathan said, so he is coming more from the media perspective, and um, so I engage more along the lines of career perspective. So, um, and obviously, you know, whether you're in 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 the entertainment business or otherwise, having a professional bio is somewhat of a necessity. Um, for me, I I specialize in writing professional resumes. 
So I like to think of a professional bio as an abbreviated version of that to some degree. Um, and um, like Jonathan said, I think it's very important to, uh, you know, abbreviate, but also keep very key points um, listed. So quality points and quantifying things. So, you know, he mentioned ticket sales. If you are, let's just for instance, say you are a sales executive, calling out the amount of sales that you've done, um, and, you know, quantifying those details, using a bulleted list, something that will draw the reader's attention to um, the text within your bio is also key as well. So um, not just, you know, several paragraphs on one page where it's just like, oh my gosh, that's a lot to digest. Um, those are key things as well. And also having a bio that you will easily be able to kind of memorize to some degree and recite. So that if you're at a networking event, whether it's a formalized event or somewhere where you're just kind of like out and about, you don't ever know who you're going to run into. Um, just being prepared and having that pre-written um, for yourself and prepared for yourself, not necessarily like you're going to have a script in front of you, but knowing that you've already prepared that bio, whether it's something that you're publishing on a website or that you have ready for yourself to share, you know, with, with a potential employer, for instance. Um, having that knowledge just kind of embedded and having maybe like a five or 10 second elevator speech for somebody that you might bump into while you're out and about is really important. So I feel like, you know, those are some key reasons why having a, a bio written and prepared is, is essential. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah. Oh yeah, true indeed. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, Morgan <laughs> said a lot of great things. I also want to uh, say, also want to say on the career side of it, uh, and this is just my opinion, but you're you're an expert on that side of it, and I just want to say this for the audience: uh, should the the resume and things like that, that should also be one page too, correct? Yes, we try to keep it to one page if we can. Obviously, there are, you know people who have 25, 30 years of experience. And, you know, it's definitely acceptable to go over to two pages, but I never exceed two. So, um, you know, generally one to one and a half is where we land with that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, great question. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And speaking of great questions, if anybody have any great questions to ask us, uh, pop it in the chat uh, or anywhere you can put questions for us to see it. You know, we're here to, we're here to help. We're here to answer questions. Um, okay. I, we have a question. So um, should your, should your bio be submitted with your resume or, or should it be by request only? That's the, that's the question. I, I, I send them both like uh, it, it, for what I do, you know, um, it's no harm in it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. I think that um, you really have to know your audience. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, it, you really have to know your audience. So if you are, I guess, applying formally online for, for a job and they're requesting a copy of your resume, then obviously submit your resume. Um, a bio, I think, is more something, a more in formalized but informal to where you would utilize that as a reference tool. Um, I say that it doesn't necessarily complement your resume per se because you might, it's going to be different. It's a totally different tool that you're going to have access to. Um, so um, if, you know, it could be, it could also be altered as kind of a marketing letter, what we kind of also use as a cover letter maybe. So, you know, you could, um, you know, you know, we could definitely, if you have a specific scenario, um, we could take that offline if you'd like and, and kind of address that individually. Um, but I absolutely think there are, you know, you have to kind of gauge and know your audience. Would you say so, Jonathan? I think there's times when maybe, you know, there's circumstances where maybe you would provide both, um, just depending on, you know, what this, you know, type of position, the type of role, who you're, you know, type of company you're applying to, um, you know, the industry and all of that kind of plays a factor, I think. Oh yeah, true indeed. Just like uh, 
when you're filling out applications or sending resumes, you tailor the resume to the job or the position, right. you know, because you're not going to send this job, job A and position B, you're not going to send mm -hmm. them the same thing. You know, it has to be exactly. specific, you know, to the thing. And also even with what I do as well, uh, you know, I have some of these, some uh, public figures and things like that. They wear multiple hats and, and mm -hmm. I, I always advise it's best to kind of tailor specific bios or talk about certain businesses and certain things even if the even if the businesses could be cross-promoted and things like that it's best to uh have an objective with your bio and, and your resume Absolutely. you know because uh sometimes you want to you're doing it for an appearance you know it, mm -hmm. you need something different for that sometimes you're doing it for a speaking engagement you need something tailored for that you know, and exactly. again, if you need help on that, you could, you know, get at me at the <laughs> information. <laughs> yeah. Know your audience for sure. Yeah. So we had a question and you um you pretty much answered it. Um, but the question was, is um oh, oops, let me read it. Sorry. It says, What about someone that has a multitude of um, positions from past employments and it is two pages. How do you break that up with 30 plus years of experience? So um, you really already answered it that you basically go off of the position or what it is that you're applying for and using that experience to go for what it is that you're applying for. Is that basically your basically what your suggestions are? Yeah. Is this based on what you're applying for and the position that you're 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 going for? Is that correct? Yeah, to some degree. So if you have, you know, several years of experience, like 30 years of experience, there's ways that we can manipulate, if you will, um, finesse the information on a resume to where we don't have to keep it super long. So um, what I like to do, one of the tricks that I like to do and share with, with people is that you can list out maybe like the first 10 to 15 years of experience, let's just throwing out an example, or even 20, and then if there's relatable experience that you still want to include, you can abbreviate that at the, at the bottom or somewhere else on the resume. Um, and so that you're still saying, hey, I, I did this for, you know, an additional 10 years, but we're not like spilling out all the, or spelling out all the details of that. So it still kind of shows um, a potential employer that you have that experience um, without making the resume too wordy and too crowded, if you will. So there's right. definitely ways around that. Right. Yep. And they they did acknowledge that you answered the question, but I just want to make sure that we're not missing anyone's questions. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, um, I also want to say this, too. Um, you, always, you always put references in there. You know, like if you send out a resume, you have about three or four references that people can call or email to see if you're, uh, if you're official, you know, see if your credit is good with them, you know? Um, and one thing I want to say on the, on, on what I do with the, uh, the EPKs and things like that is, uh, put in testimonials. If you, like I said, if you need a second page, this is what, it, this is what needs to be on that testimonials, not just references, but, you know, just people saying good things about what you do, uh, oh, this person speaks so well. I like their journey. I learned so much. Put that in there. Uh, another thing I want to say that's good for business, never mind a bio, never mind the EPK, but I just want to say in general, you want to put this on your bio and EPK as well, but a lot of people sleep on this. And this has been the success of the Media Blast PR and Blacktopia is social proof. Social proof. Remember that. Social proof is very important. A lot of y'all that follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you see me in a lot of pictures with people. You see, oh, he knows this person, he knows that person. I that that's that's people's that you know subconsciously people go, he must be a good guy. He knows all these people, and they're saying good things about him. And that stuff gets you more business. That stuff gets you hired. If other people, you know what they say is not who you know, it's who knows you and who you know the saying. <laughs> that's <laughs> I'm not letting you know. Let know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, so that stuff works. You know, um, for any for all of you that have that use social media to promote your business, uh don't be shy about that. I don't shy away from that. I, I try to get as many photos, as many testimonials. 
uh, video drops from people. And I know this is kind of getting off the resume and the bio part of it, but it, it all ties into to your business. Uh, yeah. get, if you can flip the camera around and get somebody saying, hey, he does good work, use it. You know, because your main objective is to get more work, get more money or get hired. You know, that, that that's what it's all about. And by any means necessary, if all of these techniques get you hired, do it. You know, it's it's not wrong to do. Uh, do it. You know, it's it, it, it's it's a, it's a popularity contest. Well, not just a popularity contest. You have to actually be good at what you say you do. But um, <laughs> things like this help. So um, I, I'm going to ask this question. Um, so when it comes to social media, I think there's a big difference between someone who is a speaker celebrity versus someone who is doing a career bio. So where social media might be helpful for a celebrity, speaker, artist, so forth and so on, it can be harmful for someone when it comes to career because that's personal, you know? So whereas you might be with a bunch of rappers as an artist, that might be something totally different when you're trying to get a you know, I don't know, office manager job. So um, I think it's really important that maybe we should talk about um, what are the, the difference in what you should highlight, Jonathan, when you're doing bios or like speakers, entertainers, so forth. Whereas Morgan, what are the things that you, you, are, you should highlight for someone that's um, doing a career bio? Okay, I, I, I want to say this, I want to say this right quick. Uh, for the people that are, are, are doing this for, you know, corporate America, getting positions, uh, yeah, you, you don't want to put too much of your personal stuff on there because, that, <laughs> that, that, you know, people have gotten fired for doing that. Even if they've gotten the job, they've gotten fired because people have seen their social media. But what I would like to suggest, though, is I don't think it would hurt to um, maybe if you take photos with people that are key in that industry, if you know them, uh, maybe people you may have ran, ran ran into at job fairs and things like that, that could possibly help. Um, you know, not, you know, I, I know it's more of Morgan's lane, you know, if, if that worked, does it work doing things like that or? Yeah, no, you know what, honestly, that's a really good point, Tiffany. I'm glad that you mentioned that social media in general. And, you know, to your point, Jonathan, I think that in your lane of business, that's ideal, you know, with social media and having that presence. Um, in fact, I think it's, you know, dependent upon your industry, you know, it makes it makes the most sense. You know, if, if I'm in, you know, the media a lot, and if I'm a blogger or, you know, it, it just makes sense for me to be on a social media platform and that kind of like blends into what I do. Um, then, yeah, I think it, it makes sense to identify myself in a social media presence and make sure that it, you know, gives that mark of who I am. Um, when it comes to other types of professions, again, I think that in general, we probably should just be careful of our social media stamp period because nothing is private. You know, let's just face it, nothing is, is private anymore. So, you know, what you put out there is what, is what people will will pick up about you. And so um, I know a lot of corporate organizations have social media policies, even after you get hired, you know, they have different policies about, um, you know, how you can, you know, what you can and cannot do, what, what their expectations of you are. Um, and so if you, I would just recommend, you know, those things are generally public information you can find on, on websites if you're looking to apply for certain organizations and you can find that information. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you're, you know, if you partake in recreational activities that, you know, you may not, you know, want everyone to know about, you know, that might be something that you might not want to put on your, you know, Instagram live, you know what I mean? So um, especially if you are actively searching for a job, it might be something that a human resources department or hiring manager might immediately go to. So I would say just tread lightly there and just, you know, think logically when it comes to what you're posting on social media to ensure that you're representative of what you want people to, to see, you know, not just on paper, but in real life. So that's just my advice on that. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. Thank you. And, and I also want to add, too, that even for public figures, uh, there are some things that can hurt your brand. 
You know, it, it can make some, you can do some things and post it up that will make people unfollow you because they saw it. So you still have to yeah. be careful with that too. I, I Even with myself, I don't show y'all everything. I just show y'all the things <laughs> I want y'all to see that's going to give me some more business, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, 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 Tiffany, um, uh, Tiffany Seiler, I think she's uh, still tuned in. She's trying to get a question over, uh, and I don't think she knows how to how to get in and do it. She's in, she's a part of the group, but I can't read it because I'm trying to concentrate on this too. So uh, I just want to um, let you know. Okay, Tiffany, if you want to send it to me or put it in the group chat um, on Messenger, I can try to see if I can. Um, put it out there or if you feel comfortable you can come you can unmute yourself and just go ahead and ask whatever's easiest for you oh yeah definitely and while she's doing that i'm going to bring up some of the next talking points okay uh, I know people are inboxing me too and i can't break my concentration y'all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, if anyone different. has any questions please post it to the Facebook um, thread, you can also um, um, message me as well, Tiffany Sunshine Brown. I have my messenger up. Um, there are several different ways that you can um, get your questions in. Oh yes, oh yes. Okay, um, so we covered most of these talking points just flowing. Um, yeah, we, nice. we covered a lot. <laughs> uh, oh, let's talk about what you don't want in your bio. Um, oh, actually, Morgan, you had a question. You said uh, what you should highlight, right? Um, yeah, let me go back to that, and then we'll talk about what you should not have in there. Uh, again, it, de it depends on um, the brand and who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, like just say if you're, if you're a, a speaker, there are some things that you, it, it may not be important to, uh, to who's booking you as opposed to if you're an, a recording artist and you're trying to get a, a gig, a, a, you know, to perform. So it depends on where you, what you're trying to do with it. You know, uh, like I said, if you're a speaker, you want to talk about, um, I guess, some of your results, uh, who's, who, where you've spoken at. Uh, what's those some more highlights? You know, if we turn the Zoom off, I, I can answer it real quick. <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> When you're on the spot, you got to think. Um, yeah, but you know, things like that. That's pretty much yeah. the, the, you know. Um, but things you shouldn't put in your bio. And we all know what you shouldn't put in there. But I do get, you know, people that send me their bio and they want me to revise it. And they have things in there, like their favorite color, the food they eat, and things like that. And that's not, uh, that's, I guess it's cute, but it's not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> You know, just just right. take that stuff out. Um, I do have Tiffany's question if you're ready for it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so she said that um, if you're just starting out and don't have a lot um, to show, what are some tips to um, stand out otherwise than your um, good attitude, character, and personality? Okay, I'm going to take it first. Uh, mm -hmm. basically if you don't have a lot on your resume, you don't have a lot of, uh, history to put in the bio, make the things you have done sound really good. And that's mm -hmm. what I do as well. Uh, I get, I get people who don't have a pre-existing bio or pre-existing resume, but they have some things to put on there. I tell them to send me bullet points, you know, send me a couple of bullet points, what you've done so far, even if it's not much and just make that sound really good. You know, just make it sound like when you're going in for a job interview, you know, and you sit down and, and, and they're interviewing, you ask the questions, uh, you know, you make it, you make what you did sound so much better than what it actually was. You know, if somebody asks you if you're a good team player and you give them this, you give them a movie and all you did was you participated. That's all it, <laughs> you, you make it sound like, oh, I, I had to take them and I helped them and, and they, I did CPR on them. I mean, don't lie, but you know, but just. You make it sound really good. And that's what I do too. Uh, for anybody that doesn't have a bio or an EPK, don't have any of that, but you need one, you want one, uh, reach out to me and just give me some bullet points, you know, and, and I can make that sound way better than what it really is. Not saying that it's not good. 
I, that didn't sound right, but <laughs> but make it all an answer. Put it like that. Yeah, and I'll piggyback off of that too because, and that that's true. It's just about finding the right words, elaborating on what you have. It's like a foundation, and we we just build upon that. Also, I would say if you don't have a lot of professional background, think about your volunteer work. Think about memberships that you that you hold, um, hobbies and things of, of interest that you're able to kind of you know build upon. Because all of that plays a factor into kind of who you are, what you do, your interests. And, um, you know, we can work with those types of things to build a bio that creates, a, a, you know, a full brand and picture of, you know, who you are. Exactly. Yes. And something I used to tell um, people, um, helping people get jobs that um, maybe were coming just out of high school or hadn't worked in a while. Because I worked with a lot of single moms who... Um, and I also used to talk to them about, if you were a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, you have a lot of um, transferable skills. You were budgeting, taking care of the home, you were cleaning all day, you had time management skills, you have accounting skills. So think, take, um, think about those transferable skills that you were using as a stay-at-home mom and, and stay-at-home wife. You still have skills that you can transfer to do other things. So those were some of the, the, the things that I was able to help people with when it came to building a resume, even though they weren't out getting a paycheck, but they were out volunteering, like you said, Morgan, or they were taking care of the kids or they were running the neighborhood association. They still had skills that they were actually doing on a daily basis that could transfer and go onto a resume that they can highlight in a, in a resume that, people will be able to look at and say, yes, she has these skills. Um, and we were able to formulate them um, for them to be able to market themselves um, to people when they were looking yeah. for jobs. That's a great oh, point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I want to go for filling gaps, too. Yes, very true. Very good for filling in gaps. Exactly. And I also want to add on to that, too. Uh, when I was younger, when I was in my early 20s, is, you know, when I was, you know, filling out different job applications and trying to get, you know, I didn't, my resume wasn't big yet. <laughs> and, um, and one of the things I put on, on my resume is I used to be a candy striper. I don't know if that's even a thing still, but I was a candy striper <laughs> at, a, at a hospital. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, um, so You're showing I your put, age, Jonathan. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I know candy striper wasn't that? <laughs> people, yeah. but uh, but back then, yeah, I was a I was a candy striper at a hospital, uh, probably the last generation of that, and um, and I, well, I put that on my resume, and um, when I when I uh, got the job interview, I said this. Well, you know, I used to be a candy striper, so you know, if anybody's gonna come to work for free, you know, I'm a good employee. <laughs> so you know, you can do things like that too, but. Put it if you don't have much to put on there. Put what you skills you do have. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Also, one of the earlier things I did too was I, I put that I'm um, uh, some of the things that I kind of taught myself to do, like uh, Microsoft Excel mm -hmm. and things like that. I didn't have a certificate in it, at least not, not at that time, but just put that in there. That, that looks good. Yeah. Question. Very nice. Um, we have another question. So it says, um, let's say you are a speaker and you want to connect with someone to be asked on their platform, what would be your first point of contact? Would you send your resume, your bio, or what are your suggestions? Can you repeat that one more time? I know it's for me, but people are, are getting at me. Sorry about that, <laughs> Tiffany. Okay. Um, so basically they're saying that let's say you are a speaker or you want to be a speaker on someone's platform, what would be your first um, what was it? Your first form of contact. So basically they want to know if you want to be a speaker on someone's platform, do you send them your bio, your resume, or how would you go about it? Yeah, I sent them the bio for that because they want to know why should you be speaking on their platform and uh, actually just send the EPK, you know, uh, if it's just like if you're sending it to a like somebody's podcast or something like that. They, they're just going to need that bio because it's also going to help them ask questions, you know, things like that. They really don't really need your resume like that because uh, you're not really 
going to do business with you in that way. They want to know more about you, your history, why you should be on, things like that. Uh, but it doesn't hurt, though, if you do send them both. But, you know, just want to highlight that bio. I hope that helped. Yes, I believe that answered the question. Um, and then another question is, talking about yourself can be pretty complicated. I know for me, writing my own bio, and this is me personally, Tiffany saying this, but the question is that talking about yourself can be pretty complicated. Um, what would you suggest as someone that is trying to write their own bio? How would you start? I would suggest you hire me and I'd write it for you. I'd say some good stuff about you, even if I just met you. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so do business with me. But uh, but if you're going to try to write it yourself, um, yeah, you you can't you 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 gotta you you can't be um, I don't know what the word you, you can't you can't do that. You can't be modest. You gotta you get. It, I know you. A lot of people feel like they're bragging. But if you want, if you're going to brag anywhere else, this is the place you need to brag on is, is things like this. You know, you have to make yourself uh, seem bigger and, and better than what you think you are, you know, um, because that's what people want. I mean, that's what I mean, when they want to hire you, when they want to use you for anything, they want to know why. And if you don't sound good about yourself or you don't sound confident about yourself, then they're, I don't, well, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a speaker that doesn't sound confident. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? So they do want, you know, you have to, you have to shine. Well, I, know, I have a question for you. Oh, go ahead. And I know, especially as, as women, and this was a, a young lady that asked, especially as women, sometimes we can be our own worst critic. So I'm going to ask Morgan to answer that question too. Um, when oh. you're, when you're creating your own bio, Morgan, yourself, and you're having to write your own bio, where would you suggest you, you start when you want to write your own? Yeah, so I would say, you know, it, it's hard to formalize something when you first sit down to write. So I would say, you know, whether you're typing it out or you, if you're a pen and paper type of person, to just really just start writing words out on a paper that define you, right? So get some key key phrases and key words out that define who you are that you really want to capture. Once you have that, then you can build on, you know, maybe you, maybe you start out with like, this is who I want to introduce myself as personally. You know, I am Morgan from Virginia. This is what I, you know, I've been doing resumes for 10 years. This is why I love it, right? Um, and this is, you know, more big, or this is how I got into it. I went through a career transition. So, you know, maybe just a little bit of blurb about, you know, what kind of led you into where you are today, a little bit of background. But I would just say, don't let it overwhelm you. Get into just some keywords and phrases that define who you are um, and let it kind of be like a little journal entry for you at first. Um, and then from there, you can kind of work into formalizing it. I know for me, um, I work with, when I, when I work with my clients, we kind of partner together in developing what they want their profiles to look like, right? So it's not like a cookie cutter thing for everybody. And so, yeah, as women too, it's like sometimes you, you, your branding might be a little different than, than, a, than a man's branding. And especially if you're, um, you know, again, I, I keep saying this, but depending on the industry that you're in and depending on your background, so I mean, there's several variables, but I would just say, keep it simple to start. Think about some key things for yourself, key phrases and words that really define who you are, what really ground you and really what, you know, maybe like five to 10 words and phrases that you want to be identified as, and then kind of, you know, build around that. Um, I also, um, you know, offer like, you know, if you don't want to hire somebody to, you know, if you have a, a bio and you just kind of want somebody to proofread it and just kind of say, hey, take a look at this and you really want to do it yourself, you know, we can partner and, and kind of work that way too. But um, yeah, I think there's really not necessarily a, a, a cookie cutter way of, of doing it per se, but um, starting it kind of like a journal entry for, if you think of it that way, I think it might help you get started at least getting some words down. Yeah, that's a good, that's some good advice, Morgan. Definitely. You, you know, like think of it as a journal entry. And I also want to add, 
get a thesaurus. Or if you don't have a thesaurus, you can go to thesaurus.com and, and okay. use those words. You don't want to sound redundant in your bio because if you sound boring, they think that speech is going to be boring when they book you. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, just just make just put some colorful words in there, you know. Yes. And I had actually a couple of ladies who have said the same thing that I don't know how to put myself down on paper. So that that was a good question um, for the young lady who asked, asked that question first. <laughs> um, OK, so I understand promoting ourselves in the best light. However, I watch several people come off cocky and that turns me off as a consumer. Um, uh oh. I missed, uh-oh, ah, it cut off. Hold on one second, I'm trying to get back to it. Let me see. As a, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs in regards to what not to say about their business? Uh, I would stay away from, from making like these wild, uh, well, first of all, don't put a bunch of declarations in there. Uh, also don't say things like, I am the best at or the best or things like putting you number one when you know uh, somebody could research that and say that, no, you're not number one in that. <laughs> so, so I wouldn't do those kind of things. But uh, say, say the way to tone it down, the way I do it is I'm one of the best or you know, not me. I am one of the best, but I'm talking about <laughs> <the client. laughs> I'm one of the best, uh, one of the one of the main, you know, X, Y and Z and X, Y and Z area. And uh, also, uh, when I was putting out press for the, the uh, you know, a shout out to Tammy Thomas, the poet to Supreme, Tammy Thomas. Uh, when I was putting out information about her performing her poetry in Charlotte, North Carolina, I put top selling Amazon author. You know, uh, it doesn't, it's, 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 it's specific, it's vague, and it makes her look good all at the same time. It, you know, it, and it doesn't come off a certain way. You know, you can use things like that. Also, like I said, use that thesaurus. You know, you can use bold words and still tone it down. And one last thing I want to say about that is, uh, yeah, you want to, you want to, you do want to not sound cocky, but you do want to sound really good in your resume or in your, uh, in your bio. But when they meet you, that's when you tone it down. You know, don't come, don't sound like that bio when you're talking to people. And, and, and that's the same with me. I don't, you know, a lot of people, you know, when I'm talking on the, on the, you can see my words. Yeah. I sound like, a, I guess I could sound arrogant. Depends on who's reading it. But uh, when you talk to me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I guess I'm a nice guy. Tiffany lets me on things. So. Can't, <laughs> just can't <do> that, man. <laughs> yes. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with that, that you, you definitely um, give yourself kudos, but don't for number one, don't lie. Cause people will, will look you up, they will Google you. Um, don't lie about anything. Um, and um, definitely uh, do not make proclamations that are not true. Um, I agree with that. Um, and then also when it comes to careers, do not ever think that jobs are not checking your references because I check references for new employees all the time. So you wanna be really careful of that. And I'm sure Morgan can agree that you wanna make sure that when you give those references, that those references are going, are legit and that they're going to actually give you good references. So just think of those things when you are writing your bio that you're giving factual information that can be verified because you never know who's actually going to be reading your bio or your resume and they're actually going to confirm that what you are putting down is true <laughs> yeah yep. and it's, it's okay to be confident there's a difference between confidence and cockiness so yeah and you should I'll, I'll just i'll just piggyback off of that and say that you should be confident and at any career level you should be absolutely confident in your skill set and, and you should let that shine in the best way possible. So there's no need to feel like you have to, you know, be dishonest about, you know, anything because um, what's out there and for you is going to be for you. And so um, it's, you know, the way, that, the way that your bio and your resume and your career profile is designed um, will be meant to stand out specifically for the right 
you know, the right audience for you. So, um, yeah, I agree with all of that. Yep. Oh, yes. And I also want to say, too, I thought of, this is something I was going to say earlier, but I just remembered it now, is highlight your strengths on your resume, your bio, your EPK, highlight your strengths. And if there's any, any weaknesses that you do have, don't even put it on there. If there's anything that you're not sure of, you don't want to sound unsure in the EPK or in the bio. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're not that good at it, but you provide it or you do it or something like that, just leave it off. You know, don't, don't try to make a weakness sound good. Make your strength sound better. You know, when you're doing, when you're presenting yourself in the bio. Yes, that's great. Um, we have about nine minutes left. Um, so this is part one of our conversations on professional bios. This was really for us to kind of learn about what bios are, for you to ask questions. Um, this was hosted um, by Jonathan and Morgan. So next week we're gonna flip flop and it's gonna be um, hosted by Morgan to talk more about the career side of um, um, professional bios and to learn more about writing um, professional career photos, um, for photos, sorry, bios. Um, and so Jonathan, do you wanna wrap up um, and share the key highlights of tonight? And then we're gonna give those that are still on um, that, that uh, minute to um, shout out their businesses before we end for the night. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make it quick because I know I talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> highlight your strengths, highlight your strengths. Social proof, you can't see my finger. Uh, yeah, social proof, okay, don't need to see my hands. Strengths, <laughs> social proof, uh, use the thesaurus, make yourself sound good and uh, and, and hire me to, to do the things you can't do or don't want. You know, you don't have time to write that. I'll write it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and um special offers to um ucc members oh yes if you're a member of the ucc and you need that bio written uh reach out to me i was gonna uh uh offer a, a discount but what i'll do is i'll add on some you get two free well i said three in the inbox so i might as well keep it <laughs> keep a <my> promise <laughs> three, three, three weeks of uh of, of the pr service so you automatically get that if you hire me to write the bio. And uh, if I think of some kind of discount to go with, I'll, I'll do that too. You know, it's all about helping people. It's not all about the money all the time. All right. Awesome. So um, reach out to Jonathan. We will make sure that tonight we put it in the Urban City um, Connect events group. This is for members only. So members only will ha have access and he will be asking, are you a member of Urban City Connect events? Um, we'll be able to get their bio done by Jonathan. Um, and he's also going to add three weeks of PR service for your brand. Um, for Urban City Connect events members, you can find us on Facebook. We also have a Facebook page as well. I will put it in the comments comments on um, under this thread for this live, um, how to join our group. We have UCC conversations all the time. Next week, same time, um, Monday the 18th at 7, Miss Morgan is going to be doing part two of professional bios and why is it important from a career standpoint, whereas tonight Jonathan talked about you as a celebrity, as an artist, as a speaker, and he will also join us next week as well to elaborate on that as well. Um, so right now we're going to let Morgan go ahead and wrap up tonight's points as well, and then we're going to have those that are remaining do their one minute shout outs of their brand. Ms. Morgan? Yeah, so I would just say also kind of, you know, mimicking the same points as, as Jonathan, um, just keeping things very professional, um, adding some key bullets to your professional profile or your bio, um, making sure that you're highlighting and quantifying things. Um, if you're in sales, saying how much you've sold, just making sure that you're highlighting those types of, of details, um, making, making them bold, using strengths on your bio as well. So don't be afraid to um, brag about yourself a little bit on your bio um, in a humble manner and, um, you know, get noticed. 
Very nice. Thank very nice. Um, would anybody like to shout out their brand? I know we have several business owners on here. We have Sean, Maritza, Lakeisha, almost everybody on here has their own brand. Would you like to go ahead and shout out your brand for the night before we get off? Uh, is it possible I can go? Yeah, go ahead. Um, how you doing, y'all? I am Sean Smart, aka Spike the Icon on social media outlets. Um, specialize in accountability coaching, um, besides therapy and a few other uh, things. But uh, one of my main passions is helping business owners take their idea from A to Z with accountability coaching, meaning getting their um, uh, self-established business ID, text ID, LLC, logo, websites, you name it, to making that first sale. Um, also have, having uh, helping existing business owners who don't, uh, who need help as well. One should be selling their own brand of everything. If you're, if you're doing hair, you need to be selling your own brand. Um, and I specialize in connecting the two uh, with vendors across the world to make that happen. So um, once again, um, my website is smartshawn. Dot com. You can find me on social media outlets uh, at Spike. Nice. And I'm sorry. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you, Spike. Thanks, Sean. Um, Jonathan, tell us, tell us your um, social media, please. I did not ask you to do that. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, on Instagram is at J-A-Y-F-O-R-N-O-W, J for now. And on Facebook, Jonathan Coleman. You can, you can reach me in the Media Blast Facebook group, the Blacktopia Facebook group. And uh, what other apps am I on? Yeah, just, just get those. If you want the other ones, just reach me on Instagram or Facebook first, and I'll just send you what a, the other things you want, you know. But those, Jay for now and Jonathan Coleman. Got it. Thank you. Miss Morgan, can you give us your um, social media, please, or your website? Yeah, sure. So Facebook is just Career Navigators, and Instagram is Career underscore Navigators. Thank you, ma'am. All righty. Would anybody else like to shout out their business? Oh, I'll go. Okay. Oh. Hi, everybody. I am Lakeisha. Of, um, I'm owner and creator of Keisha's Cakes here in Charlotte and also Diamond Status Traveling. Um, I've been baking for about 13 years, and I've been a travel agent a little over six. Um, I specialize as far as cakes in pretty much anything. Um, most popular is pound cakes. So if you ever just want a cake or have an event, you can always reach out to me um, as far as travel. I can book pretty much anything, hotel, vacations, cruises, cars. Um, I can do the work. So to find me on social media for Facebook is uh, Keisha's Cakes and Cakes is with a K. So it's K-A-K-E-S. And for Diamond Status, it's uh, Diamond Status Traveling. I'm also on Instagram, Keisha Cake. And then for the travel, it's Diamond underscore Travel. No, Diamond underscore Status underscore Travel. So I'm here if you need me. Nice. Thank you so much, Ms. Keisha Cake. You're and welcome. I can tell y'all that, yes, everything she makes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, also, uh, I don't go also to nobody else. <laughs> also wrote Keisha's synopsis too for her business. The, uh, you did. Yeah. I need a bio. I I'm gonna reach out to you. I need a bio. <laughs> <laughs> we'll right. do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Keisha. Would anybody else no like problem. to start out your business? If I can go, um, sure thing. This is Chantel Archbold. I am the owner of Marie's Home, LLC. Um, we are actually a homeopathic wellness center where I do organic skincare, 100% organic skincare, as well as holistic massages. We're located in Kannapolis. Um, I am actually new in the business itself, but I've been actually making products for about, I want to say about 12 or 13 years now. Um, and so it's just a passion of mine because I wanted to bring affordable skincare to people. I'm not a person that wears makeup, so I've always believed in healing, and I've learned that it really just starts within and radiates without, which is why I got into the massage business. I wanted to be able to help people realign and just come back to themselves. 
Um, I can be reached through Instagram with the at symbol Marie's Home 2021. And I also have a website, which is Marie's Home 2021.com. Got it. Marie's Home 2021.com. All right. I've got it. Thank you so much, lady, for coming on. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to do their shout out? I think we have Miss Nicole Maritza. Would you like to shout out your business, love? Is okay. it possible for me to go? Oh. Yep, go ahead. Hi, guys. My name is Maritza, and I um, am manager and owner of a cleaning business. We are called MB Spotless Cleaning. So we focus and specialize on uh, residential for right now, looking forward to expanding um, to more than that. We help uh, with organizing in any of the home clean needs. So if you guys need anything, you guys can find us on Google at MV Spotless Cleaning or Facebook, MV Spotless Cleaning as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I need some cleaning. I'm going to call you. <laughs> I feel like my house is so unorganized with all these kids in house. <laughs> well, absolutely. You know where to find me. I do know how to find you. I'm going to be reaching out very soon. I promise. Thank you, Miss Maritza. Um, I think was Nicole. Were you about to come on? Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. Well, it's going to defeat the purpose of which I did the bio for if I introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nicole, N-I-C-K-O-L-E Williams, a.k.a. Doll Lady Laureate. I am the president of the Queen City Dolls under National Doll Agent Doll Hollywood. We're out of Doll Virgo's region, and we're under the umbrella of Leap Dolls of Faith, where our founder is Doll Faith. My business, I am a domestic violence advocate, a youth mentor advocate, um, prison ministry, political awareness, and on the flip side, I am a poet, an author of five books, and you can find all five of my books available on Amazon.com under N-I-C-K-O-L-E Williams. My books are actually are about what I do in the community, giving back and everything that I've seen through domestic violence, through violence, abuse, sexual awareness, and everything. So I say my business is my heart. So that's what I do. And you can find me on social media under Nicole, N-I-C-K-O-L-E Williams. You will see Doll Lady Laureate under that. And on Instagram, you can find me under B-L-A-K-B-U-T-T-A, -T -T Fly, 1970. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Nicole. And um, also, I want to shout out that Miss Nicole is affiliated with God's Gift Baby Ministry. Um, they help uh, young ladies um, with getting uh, clothing and needed items for their, um, for their infants, newborns, and children. Um, so I've been connected with them for a couple of years now, and um, that's actually the way I met her and uh, Miss Belinda. So um, shout out to God's Gift Baby Ministry for all the work you're doing in the community to help young ladies and their children. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you so much. And thank you mm -hmm. so much for your donations too. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you so much. Well, thank I think you. that covers everybody. So thank you everybody um, for joining us tonight. Please return next Monday at seven o'clock as we have UCC conversations with Miss Morgan Taylor and um, Jonathan Coleman as we continue our conversation about professional bios. If you need a professional bio, please reach out to Jonathan Coleman for a professional bio or an EPK. Um, if you are a celebrity, an artist, a model, a speaker, uh, it, all, all that stuff, if you're looking for a career bio, definitely reach out to Miss Morgan. And his uh, special offer to all UCC members is your bio plus three weeks of um, PR and social media advertising. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you again soon. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.